Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk to you all about makeup brushes. Now as you well know, makeup brushes are a great tool to put on your makeup, but a lot of people have trouble, they don't know if they're using them right, but I'm going to tell you a little secret. The best thing about makeup is that there's no rules. I'm going to tell you about how I use my makeup brushes. The best thing about it is that you can use any makeup brush the way you see fit. Now I have a few categories for the foundation section, I guess I could say. The first one is going to be a regular paddle foundation brush. It looks something like this. It's flat on one side. And basically what you do with this is you take up your makeup like this and you brush it onto your face as if you were painting. Um, personally, I don't know if it's the brush that I use, but I find that this leaves me streaky. So that leads me to my next brush. Another foundation brush that you can use is a flat top kabuki brush. This one happens to be by Sonia Kashuk. And what this is made for is buffing things into your skin. Like foundation, cream contour, cream highlight. Harlot. Cream highlights. Um, so what you do, I do is I have some foundation on the back of my hand. And I press it into my skin and then go in circular motions to blend it out just like this. Another very helpful thing to know about this foundation brush is that when you press it into your skin like this, it helps the foundation be pressed into your skin so that your foundation lasts longer and then you buff it out. Like go to this brush, why can't I just go straight to this brush? So that's what I do now. One of the last categories is sponges, and I know what you guys are thinking, sponges are not as good of a tool as brushes, but I beg to differ. There are some sponges like the Beauty Blender and the Real Techniques blending sponge that are perfect for applying foundation because they do not soak up the product, and the reason they don't soak up the product is that you go to the sink, you turn on the water, and you squeeze, 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 squeeze it under the water about 15 times, and it soaks up all the water. Or go, it doesn't soak up all your product. Because not all of your product will end up in the sponge instead of on your thing I'm going to go to is powder brushes. Now there are many types of powder brushes, but usually powder brushes are big and fluffy, can cover a lot of area on your skin and what you do with these is you just brush it into your powder like this and go in circular motions over your face. They help your powders not look cakey. They're also really really great for blending. Now there's this this Real Techniques blush brush and like I said it's a blush brush but because I feel like it's too big for my you know, blush area. I don't usually apply my blush in such a large area. I find this really great as a powder brush. So what I do is I swirl it into my powder and I go in circular motions all over my forehead, my face, and so forth. Then we have the Kabuki powder brushes. Now these are made for the same thing. Blending, buffing, you swirl it into your Swirl it into your powder and you apply it to your face and circle. You should always have a big powder brush around because it is helpful when you have fallout under your eyes. It helps you wipe it away. You know, let's say you put too much contour on, you can go in there and just blend it out. It helps buff everything and it doesn't look to where it doesn't look like we have harsh. There are a few different types of concealer brushes. You can either use the same brush, the same flat paddle foundation brush that you use for your foundation. You can either use a smaller version of that, which just looks just like this right here. And what you do with this is that you carefully blend in certain areas. Um, I wouldn't recommend this for under the eyes because I feel, again, it leaves me kind of streaky. What I pretty much use this one for is highlight on the brow bone. Then there is this, I call it a stiff dome brush. What it is, it's flat on the top, it's very stiff, and a lot of people like to use this because it you make little, little swipes over your face and it gives a pretty flawless finish and it does a pretty good job of blending things out. My favorite for blending out concealer is the Beauty Blender sponge. It does give an airbrushed flawless finish and you can also buy the Real Technique sponge and it is 
about $10 cheaper. Next, I'm going to go on to blush brushes. Now, there are a lot of type of blush brushes that you can use, and it can be very, very confusing. Now, my favorite to use is almost a, a fluffy dome brush. What this you can use this for is it gets right here on the apples of your cheekbones and it's easy just to sweep it up. It's the biggest reason why I like this one. This is the MAC 129 brush. Now all these three are just Sonia Kashuk brushes but they also work really really well. This one is the Sonia Kashuk 29. It gets a lot of hype here on YouTube because it's very similar to it is very similar to the MAC 129. You see how they're both fluffy dome brushes even though I prefer this one because it's a little flat. The other two blush brushes are a angled blush brush which looks just like this and a dome blush brush which looks just like this. This one is big and fluffy and is perfect for concentrating blush on the apples of your cheeks which personally I don't like to do. I like for my blush to sweep back to my temples. And the angled brush is perfect for doing this kind of blush that I have on. You basically buff it from the back to the front or the front to the back however you want but it's that perfect shape that fits the side of your face you see now I want to talk about eyeshadow brushes and specifically shader brushes so these type of brushes are perfect for putting on eyeshadow on the lid now they range from different types these in particular right here are elf concealer brushes, but I find that they are perfect for packing color onto the lid. So you dip the brush into your eyeshadow and pat, pat on your lid to get a lot of color and intensity. in. The and then you have the fluffy side of the shader brushes, which is also perfect for packing color onto the lid, but it gives you a looser application. It's not so jam-packed with color. It gives you a swift motion of color. This one's a fluffier one. This one also on the fluffier side. I'm sorry that they're dirty. I just used them. And then this is a thick. So these are perfect for lid color application. Now we're going to go on to detailer brushes. Now these brushes are very fine very small and very very dense except for this one right here I think this one is supposed to be an eyeliner brush but personally I use it as a detail brush if I need to get you know color very very close to my lower lash line two brushes are very similar to each this brush right here is also perfect for shading under the lash line um, smudging under the lash line or even on top of the lash line if you need to or for putting highlight in the inner corner. The last type of detail brush is the longer the longer paddle type brushes and they basically work that same way you can either put in the inner corner smudge out the lash line but I'm gonna be honest with you these types of brushes are not my favorite. Now I'm going to go to the holy grail of eye brushes and these are blending brushes. Now this big now this big blending brush right here is perfect for getting a blown out color right in the crease so if you want a color to look you know completely blended and blown out so that it's not too concentrated this is a perfect brush to do that I feel like every woman or female should have this in their collection if they're a makeup lover because it does really change the name of the game now we're gonna move on to um smaller blending brushes. Now these blending brushes, well, I have one from Coastal Scents, I have one from MAC, and is the MAC 217, and then I have a Real Techniques base shadow brush. And this brush, I feel like it is just perfect for blending out because it has the same kind of look to these as these two right here. They're almost flat, they're still fluffy, and they're perfect for putting concentrated color right here in the outer corner, in the inner corner, on the crease though. Just like this one is perfect and it covers more area, do you see, in comparison to this one. So these are for more concentrated, and this is for a more 
blown out. I want to talk about our dense crease brushes, which are these brushes right here. This is a Sonia Kashuk one, and this is an, an e.l.f. brush. Um, you're supposed to be able to pack color right in the crease with this one. I don't do that very often. I like the blown out look, so I don't use this very often. But this e.l.f. brush, dense and it's short, what I find it's perfect for is putting highlight on my brow bone. And it helps blend out the colors that are coming up from my lid. So when I put this color on my brow bone and use this brush on it, it kind of helps blend it in with those colors. So out of these two, I think this one's my favorite because I always use this for an inner corner highlight. Do you see how perfectly it fits right there? It just fits on the places where I want it, want my highlight to go. The next brushes I'm going to talk about are contouring brushes. Now, these are my favorite type of brushes. I just love contour, even though my cheekbones are pretty pronounced and I don't need a lot of contour, I still put contour on anyways. Woo, phone almost fell use three different brushes for my contouring not all at the same time obviously but these three different brushes I have a real eco tools I have a Sony Kashuk and I think this is a, a NARS Eda brush but um, I feel like this brush is a knockoff I got it online for $20 on eBay I'm pretty sure it's a knockoff but this even if you can get the knockoff or the real NARS Eda brush, the NARS Eda brush is just perfect. Look how perfectly it fits and it goes, it just gives you the perfect line, the perfect blending because what you do with this one is you dip it into your powder, you start at the back, bring it to the front, and blend out that way, back and forth, back and forth, and then you go up and down, and then sideways, it makes contouring easy, it makes your life so simple. So that's why I love this brush, even if it's a knockoff. Um, the other two brushes that I would contour with before I got the NARS Eda brush are these. If I wanted a more blown out kind of contour, I would go with this one. This is the blush brush that I told you about that goes perfectly right here, but what I would do is I would turn sideways and just use it to do my contouring. Because it has that angle to it, it helps me give me a straight, it helped give me a straight line. So basically what you do with this, you just put it into your powder and either with the point or if you want a blown, more blown out look, you go with this side and it just gives you a straighter line. I also use this Equal Tools brush for the same reason because it has that angle, it gives me a straighter line and what I would do usually is I would kind of pinch this brush just like this or with my hands just pinch it and then with the top corner just color in my contour. Now this can also be used as a blush brush because it has the same angle that this one does so you can also use this as a blush brush. Sorry the lighting's All right the next eyeshadow brushes I'm going to talk about are flat definer brushes. These flat definer brushes are very multi-purpose. You can apply color under the lid. You can smudge out liner on the top. You can use these for your eyebrows. Personally, I use this one for the brow area. I was watching Kathleen Lights one day and she recommended this brush and I went to The next brushes I want to talk about, which are eye brushes, are eyeliner brushes. These brushes are have that sharp, fine, angle and the sharp tip. These are usually used for gel liner, not really liquid liner, but it gives you the perfect angle. So you just would swipe right there and then go over your lid. It really does help when these brushes have a super fine point to them. Personally, I like to have that super sharp crisp. The last eyeshadow brush I want to talk to you about is a pencil brush. This is essential. Every woman needs a pencil brush. To I mean, not every woman puts shadow under their lash line, but I like to give that whole smoky effect. So this brush is perfect for going under the lash line and blending everything out seamlessly. Just like that. I feel like every woman needs this. This so that is it for all about makeup brushes. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, comment if you have any concerns. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. Bye.